Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 14th of June. India announces radical recruitment plan Agnipath for armed forces seeking younger troops. Pakistan to default if subsidies not abolished till July, says Finance Minister Miftah. And Sri Lanka gives public workers extra day off to grow food amid economic crisis. And now for all the details, India's military is overhauling its recruitment process for personnel below officer rank, aiming to deploy fitter and younger troops on its front lines, Defence Minister Rajnath Singh said on Tuesday. A total of 46,000 soldiers will be recruited this year on four-year contracts as part of the new system called Agnipath, which means path of fire. A quarter of them will be kept on after the end of their term. The Indian government on Tuesday launched a new military recruitment model named Agnipath, meaning path of fire for personnel below officer rank, aiming to deploy fitter and younger troops on its front lines on a short-term contract of four years. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh and the three service chiefs told reporters in New Delhi, under the new system, men and women between the ages of 17 and a half and 21 will be inducted into the Army, Navy and the Air Force as Agnivirs for four years. A total of 46,000 soldiers will be recruited this year. A quarter of them will be kept on after the end of their term. Rajnath Singh said a more youthful profile will help train troops more easily in newer technologies and their health and fitness levels will be much better. Adding that, employers would benefit from skilled workers once they left the armed forces. Today, the Cabinet Committee on Security has also made an ethical decision. Today, the Agnipat Namak is a transformative decision. We are bringing them to our armed forces in transformative changes. They will become fully modern and well-equipped. One of the most significant initiatives aims to make the Army a future-ready fighting force capable of meeting multiple challenges across the full spectrum of conflict. India, which shares a heavily militarized border with Pakistan and is involved in a high-altitude Himalayan standoff with China, has one of the world's largest armed forces with some 1.38 million personnel. The government also expects to save a substantial amount of money through this scheme which will be used for military modernization. And in news from Pakistan, Pakistan will default if it does not withdraw subsidies on petroleum products. Finance Minister Mifta Ismail has said, hinting at another hike in fuel prices that was to pass records earlier this month. He added the move is imperative for resumption of the six billion US dollars IMF bailout package to overcome the ongoing economic crisis. Pakistan's Finance Minister Mifta Ismail has said abolishing the subsidies on petroleum products till July was imperative to prevent the country from going bankrupt, hinting at another increase in the prices of fuel that whizzed past records earlier this month. Ismail, speaking during a TV news discussion, said that IMF, the International Monetary Fund, has asked the government to withdraw subsidies on petroleum products and the move was needed for resumption of the US$6 billion US dollars IMF bailout package. He earlier blamed the ousted Premier Imran Khan had given the subsidy in his last days in power to cool down public sentiment in the face of double-digit inflation, a move the IMF said deviated from the terms of the 2019 deal. The Basically, 
Pakistan unveiled a 47 billion US dollars budget for the year 2022 to 23 last Friday aimed at tightening fiscal consolidation in a bid to convince the IMF the next tranche that Pakistan is to receive upon a successful review is 900 million US dollars and a green light from the IMF would also open up other global funding avenues Pakistan urgently needs funds in the face of dwindling foreign exchange reserves which have reached 9.2 billion US dollars only enough for less than 45 days of imports and moving on unemployment rate is high among youths in Gilgit Baltistan a region under Pakistan's illegal control due to lack of opportunities locals lament unemployment and spiraling inflation over government's failed policies and ignorance in providing basic demands Locals in Gilgit Baltistan have raised concern over rising unemployment and soaring inflation due to Pakistan government's policies which have fueled a sense of deprivation amongst the educated youth in the illegally occupied region. They say poor roads and lack of accommodation have led to a decline in tourism, the mainstay of the economy of the region which provided them livelihood. Politicians make hollow promises to create job opportunities but that too only at the time of elections and residents have been reeling under abject poverty with not even little hope in sight they say that inflation rate has gone through the roof and it has become difficult to survive amid the situation agar ye road ban jata to shayad tourists is tarah bhaj jate logo ko rozgar ke mauke mil jate lekin yahan pe na to road koi theek surat theek halat mein hai na to yahan tourism ki koi टूरिज्म पे कोई प्रॉपर काम हो रहा है ना तो यहाँ पे रोजगार के कोई मौके दिए जा रहे हैं इस वजह से लोगों के घर के चूल्हे ठंडे हो रहे हैं लोगों के लोग इस वक्त अपने बच्चों की स्कूल की फीसें अदा नहीं कर सकते लोकल्स हैव एक्सप्रेस देयर हेल्पलेसनेस ऑन अ नंबर ऑफ ओकेजन इन दी पास बट देट हैज बेयरली चेंज द स्टांस ऑफ पाकिस्तान टूवर्ड्स दी रीजन दे ब्लेम दैट इस्लामाबाद हैज पोस्ट गिलगित बल्तिस्तान इन टू दी मोस्ट निगलेक्टेड बैकवर्ड एंड इम्पावरिश रीजन In Sri Lanka has approved a 4-day work week for public sector workers to help them cope with a chronic fuel shortage and encourage them to grow food as it struggles with its worst financial crisis in decades. The island nation is currently facing its worst economic crisis since independence in 1948. Sri Lanka's cash-strapped government approved a 4-day work week for public sector workers to help them cope with a chronic fuel shortage and encourage them to grow food, it said on Tuesday, as the country struggles with its worst financial crisis in decades. The island nation which employs about 1 million people in its public sector has been hit by a severe foreign exchange shortage, which has left it struggling to pay for critical imports of fuel, food and medicine. Many of the country's 22 million people have to queue up at petrol stations for hours and have been enduring long power cuts for months. Sri Lanka's cabinet late on Monday approved a proposal for public sector workers to be given leave every Friday for the next 3 months, partly because the fuel shortage made commuting difficult and also to encourage them to farm. The United Nations last week warned of a looming humanitarian crisis and it plans to provide 47 million dollars to help more than a million vulnerable people. Currency depreciation, rising global commodity prices and a now reversed policy to ban chemical fertilizer pushed food inflation to 57% in April. The government is in talks for a bailout package with the International Monetary Fund and a delegation is expected in Colombo on June 20. The United States is also ready to help Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said after a phone call with Prime Minister Ranil Wickremesinghe late on Monday Blinken discussed the current economic and political challenges with Ranil Wickremesinghe Earlier the Sri Lankan Prime Minister said this month Sri Lanka needed at least 5 billion US dollars to meet essential imports for the rest of the year 
In news from Nepal, Nepal is making attempts to bring the disputed tri-junction of Limpi Adhura, Kalapani and Lipu Lake claimed both by the Himalayan nation and India under its indulgence, Nepal's Minister for Land Management Shashi Shreshta said on Monday. The remarks by the minister during a parliament session came two weeks after Nepal's Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Diyoba said that his government will defend the disputed territories and underscored the issue was sensitive. Nepal's ties had strained with India in 2020 after Kathmandu published a political map that showed the three Indian territories as part of the Himalayan country. Officials of both the countries have agreed to resolve the border issue during a couple of meetings in the past two years. Last month, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi visited Nepal's Lumbini and signed six bilateral agreements with his counterpart, Dioba. India is also investing billions of dollars in infrastructure, including hydropower plants in Nepal, as New Delhi looks to grow its influence in its smaller neighbors, where China is increasingly active. And Pakistan is sweltering under an unprecedented heat wave. In Pakistani city of Jacobabad, one of the hottest places on earth, most of the residents rely on water deliveries, which can cost between a fifth and an eighth of a household's meager income. Still, it's often not enough and some families are forced to ration. In a residential area of the Pakistani city of Jacobabad, a donkey drawn cart stacked with blue plastic jerry cans stops near an entrance leading to a cluster of houses. Its driver runs back and forth through narrow lanes, delivering 20 litre containers of water from one of a few dozen private pumps around the city. On May 14, the temperature in Jacobabad hit a record breaking 51 degrees Celsius, making it the hottest city on earth that day. Most residents rely on water deliveries, which can cost between a fifth and an eighth of a household's meager income. Still, it's often not enough and some families are forced to rush it. In one home, six-month-old Tamanna cries in the afternoon heat and her mother, Razia, has enough water to pour over the baby. She then set Tamanna in front of a fan and the child was visibly calmer, playing with her mother's scarf. In another home, homemaker Rubina's family of 14 sit around an unmoving electric fan amid yet another power cut during an unprecedented heat wave. Electricity shortages are common in Pakistan, making it tricky to cool down in extreme heat. And the city's deputy commissioner said they were trying to work with other authorities to fix the problem. Local officials say water shortages were partly due to electricity cuts, which mean water cannot be filtered and sent via pipes throughout the city. There are also severe water shortages across Sindh, with Climate Change Minister Sherry Rahman flagging shortfalls of up to 60% of what is needed in the province's key dams and canals. While well, scores of devotees from all walks of life are huddled in India's eastern Puri city to take part in the annual Snan Yatra, a ritual of the holy bath of Hindu god Lord Jagannath. The idols of Lord Jagannath, his brother Lord Balbhadra and his sister goddess Subhadra are bathed with 108 pitchers of aromatic water on the occasion. Thousands of Hindu devotees from India and abroad throng the Jagannath temple in India's eastern Puri city to celebrate Snan Utsav, a ritual of holy bath of Hindu god Lord Jagannath on Tuesday. The idols of Lord Jagannath, his brother Lord Balbhadra and his sister goddess Subhadra were bathed with 108 pitchers of aromatic water as devotees from different countries sang and offered prayers. This festival is integral to Jagannath devotees and is celebrated annually on the full moon day of the month of Jaisht, according to the Hindu calendar. The festival was held in public after two years' hiatus due to coronavirus pandemic. The 
the chariot festival begins with snan yatra or bathing festival where the deities are bathed after which they remain in seclusion for about 2 weeks as they believe lord jagannath falls sick later a procession is taken out where the chariots of the three deities are taken out the gods are then taken to gundicha temple 2 kilometers away from the puri temple Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com/sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.